welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, where today we're looking at this lovely specimen here, which is blooming. Um, the plant was bought, if I recall correctly, as a cell pack at a nursery more than a month ago, and I've grown it and grown it, and it hasn't really grown a lot, but it's enough for me to do this video with that one glorious flower up there. Now, its scientific name is Salvia farinacea or commonly known as mealy cup sage, which is what I was first introduced to it as in the mid-90s. It is in the Lamiaceae family, which means it's actually related to mint. It is in the mint family, as all true sages, basils, oregano, so forth are. Um, there are a bunch of things that are called sage that aren't actually sage. Artemisia tridentata comes to mind, which is called sacred sage, but it's not even a sage. But anyway, common names will get you folks. Now, the name Farinacea means mealy or flowery, and that's a direct reference to the white hairs on the calluses. Now, not calluses, calluses. Those are the little cups that hold the flowers. The flowers are tiny little blue things, and I'm going to try to zoom in with the new camera and see what we can get here. Let's, uh, let's adjust our angle, our angle of attack. Let's see. Can we get that? Oh, yeah, look at that. Tell me that is not something. Now, see... The callus is the little white thing. The flower, what I'm touching with the stick of destiny is the flower, and the cup, the white part, is the callus. Or, individually, the calyx. C-A-Y-L-X. So, that's what that looks like. Now, looking at this up close, you can kind of see why this plant is popular. I mean, for sages, by the way, its variety is Victoria Blue. I left the tag in like I always do, so I can mention that specifically. Now, What's so special about mealy cup sage? Well, first and foremost, it is native to Mexico, Texas, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. So it is a native plant. A native plant you never knew was native because they don't advertise it. And I think that's dumb. With the current fondness for native plants, nobody thinks, gee, maybe I ought to label the actual native stuff native stuff. Duh. Why they don't do this, I don't know. It is a missed economic and informational educational opportunity. But you're watching this video. So you get in the scoop here first. Now, with that said, in USDA zone 7 through 10, it is a perennial. And the test gardens are out in zone 8A. Things that make you go, hmm. But in 6 through 1, it is an annual. Now, I used to live in New Jersey, and it was a solid annual there. It's, it was sad, really, because it's such a nice plant. And yet, you only get you have to buy it every year. Not much bang for your buck, if you ask me. Its soil pH preference, it, which this is an estimate, is 6.8 to 7.0. However, that is not 100% verified. Only the 6.8 is verified, give or take. So I estimated that it's probably a range up to 7.0, but I'm not sure. All references say that it likes calciferous soil, which means soil that is on the lime side of things. However, potting soil will be just fine. It's growing in plain old potting soil, and it looks okay. Its exposure is full sun to partial sun. I've had this out in nearly full sun, if not flat out full sun, and it seems to be doing fine. It's got healthy color. There's, you know, healthy color. The leaves are glossy. The side branching's nice. This plant will be great. Now that I know, I didn't know it was a perennial prior to filming this and researching the plant for this video, but now I do know I have plants. I have glorious plants. Now, its height can be up to four feet, and its width can be up to four feet, and yeah, I can see that. It has other names, but they're really just reshuffling of terms that, you know, people were just not imaginative. Like, blue sage, mealy blue sage, mealy sage. Um, yeah, boring. Unfortunately for y'all, those of you who want to know, this plant is not edible. Not the, not the shoots, not the roots, not the stems, not the leaves, not the flowers. However, the flowers make wonderful dried arrangements. You can pick these stems, hang them upside down to keep the color, and they make wonderful dried arrangements. So there is that. Now, for your wildlife factors, it does attract hummingbirds. Goldfinches like to perch on it and eat the seeds. Bees and butterflies also like it. But then again, I mean, salvias produce some of the best pretty flowers and theoretically the best nectar so there is that you could probably plant entire colonies of these out and create some interesting honey from honeybees using this plant because i believe sage nectar going into honey doesn't actually make the honey 
inedible. I think it's rhododendrons or azaleas that do that. I think it's rhododendrons. But anyway, the flowers can be used in dried arrangements, as I said before, and they will keep their color pretty well. Um, it's very hard to find true blue things in dried arrangements. There are a few plants that do it, but sage is, especially since it's a perennial in, most, in a lot of climates, is more reliable. Supposedly, the flowers are, set, are grape scented, but honestly, I haven't seen that. And is it grape as in the fruit or grape as in the imitation purple drank soda? These things we have to find out through scientific testing. So uh, my neighbors are probably going to see me out there snorting my poor blue sage or something like that. And they'll be like, that boy is crazy. Well, maybe. I mean, I did put this series together. Now, <clears throat> what's interesting here is the first... European description of this plant was in 1833 by George Bentham in Labi Labiatorium Genera et Species on page 274. So, this plant has been known for a fair amount of time. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's, zoom. let's see if we can get this to zoom out. Okay, there we go. So, this plant's been known for a, a fair amount of time. Now, how do you use it in a garden context? Well, what you would do is, since this is a tall, airy kind of plant, like any other perennial, a lot of the perennial ornamental sages are, you would plant it in corners or in spots where you want a breaking highlight, or in masses to attract pollinators who will come and do the do, and you'll suddenly get all kinds of wonderful magic happening. And that, I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but from a top-down perspective, mimicking natural sunlight, it kind of looks like this. So you can see why you would want it. I mean, playing with my lamp here, you can see why you would want one. It's a pretty plant no matter how you slice it. It's very attractive. It's also a sage, which means its care requirements are reduced. It's not as finicky as certain other garden perennials. And you know what you're getting. And if something should happen, it's not expensive to replace. Additionally, the birds, the bees, and the butterflies are always a bonus, considering that these creatures are having trouble due to development, um, people building stuff and knocking down forests, and so forth and so on. In fact, a close friend of mine is trying to build a miniature monarch butterfly refuge, and I'm all for it. I think it's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard of. Uh, but that's beside the point. Th this plant alone, for the color blue, is really great for the garden, because the color blue, cool color gardens are a thing. You know, there are a slew of plants that come in this, the shades of blue and purple, and you could just set them out and have them grouped together, and it would be striking. So, that's all I have about this uh, Victoria Blue Blue Sage, or Mealy Cup Sage. If you've had an experience growing this plant, please leave some comments in the comment section. If you have suggestions for plants I ought to cover, again, please leave suggestions in the comments section. I'd love to hear back from you folks. And uh, beyond that, if you like this video, hit like. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It helps the channel. We're trying to reach 500. Um, and in the video description, you will find a link to the Forage blog where we are discussing forage foods you can eat, which is interdispersed by random you know, photography of the test garden showing stuff in development. So with that said, folks, as always, keep them growing. Thank you for watching.